Hi everyone and thank you for waking up with us on this Wednesday, the 1st of May. I'm Jordan Schreer here with Lisa Badeau and we're just getting started with your news and weather to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. A lot of drivers were diverted around an overnight road closure, but it should be clear sailing again now on part of Cheyenne Street in West Fargo. Workers are starting demolition of the eastbound I-94 bridge over Cheyenne. The overnight closures are planned again tonight and tomorrow. They're working from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. when there's less traffic. An elderly Minnesota man is dead after a crash in Todd County. The state patrol says 88-year-old Joseph Strotterl of Be Bertha, rather, Minnesota, failed to yield on Highway 210 and County Road 23 yesterday morning and then crashed with an SUV. The other driver was not hurt. An elderly North Dakota man is dead after being hit by a car while riding his bike. Bismarck police say a 17-year-old girl left the road she was driving on yesterday and hit the 76-year-old man who was on a sidewalk nearby yesterday. The victim was from Bismarck. Police have not yet released his name. It is now 10 minutes before the top of the hour. Let's get a check of that forecast with Lisa Green. And your umbrella's been getting a pretty good workout these past few days. <laughs> That's right. Rain jackets, too. You're going to need them again today. This morning, starting off with some rain and drizzle, and we'll end the day with more of the same. You could see some gray skies overhead as we're looking out over I-94 here in Fargo on our Storm Team Skycam network. So dealing with some gloom, some fog, too, here to begin our morning. So checking out your radar and satellite map, it doesn't look too impressive right now, though the drizzle uh, that's out there is pretty fine, fine mist that doesn't always get picked up on the radar, but we know we've been seeing it up to the Northern Valley may even be a little bit of snow mixed in with some of those showers too as temperatures are in the 30s and we'll expand the view to show you what's next. This is what's heading our way. Some snow in South uh, South Dakota, Western South Dakota that's going to be moving to the Northeast. So this eventually moves into our Southwestern viewing area first and it will be transitioning to rain, but this might be a spot where we get a little bit of a mix initially with this system. That'll be for the afternoon and into tonight for many of us. Visibility looks low again where we've got some spotty fog and some mist and drizzle where we're seeing visibility reports less than two miles in Valley City and back over to Oaks. Our temperatures are into the 30s, upper 30s right now, 38 degrees in Fargo and in Grand Forks. So a chilly morning and one where you're going to need that rain gear too because even if it's not raining when you step out the door now, we have potential for rain throughout the day today for Fargo and throughout the valley with temperatures that will be eventually making their way into the 40s for your highs. So similar temperatures to yesterday, similarly cool and cloudy and dreary, unfortunately. Here's the good news. Tomorrow, the system starts to move on. We'll see some clearing, especially in eastern North Dakota, and that gives us a shot at some sunshine. In fact, some of us spending much of the day on with sunny skies, but there will be another system that moves in Thursday night and more chances for rain Friday and Saturday. So still unsettled here until Saturday, but we break this pattern as we head into next week. Let's check in now with Al. Morning, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. We're back out here checking things in the Metro Interstate Loop. I want to remind you about that stalled Mercedes that we have, northbound Interstate 29, right by the ramp onto Main Avenue. It's in a really bad spot. It was there yesterday as well. Tail's kind of sticking out. The no light, slow flashers. Make sure that you're looking out for it. We're on uh, westbound Interstate 94 right now, just approaching uh, Cheyenne Street, and uh, we have head-to-head -head traffic out here. It's actually quite a bit of traffic, and it's definitely slowed some through here. I wouldn't call it congested at this point, but uh, there's definitely lines forming, so make sure that you're looking out for that. And uh, speaking of Cheyenne Street, a reminder for you, as we told you a little bit earlier this morning, that the under, the underpass of Cheyenne Street and Interstate 94 is going to be shut down again tonight from 8 o'clock tonight till 6 tomorrow morning. And at 8 o'clock tonight, the intersection of 40th Avenue and Cheyenne Street, that's going to be shut down as well. That's going to be shut down until uh, June 15th, I believe it is. Drive carefully today and always. Al Island Valley today, Trump. Some people in West Fargo are worried that a new construction project could lead to potentially dangerous situations. The intersection at Cheyenne Street and 40th Avenue West is closing down tonight at 8 and won't reopen until June 15th. People believe it will create unsafe situations by diverting more cars by schools and it will make it more difficult for emergency services to get through. But the city says it has planned for all of this and says first responders are coordinating with Fargo teams on emergency plans for that neighborhood. A 35-year-old man is facing numerous charges after a nine-hour standoff in Moorhead. 
This all started around 9 yesterday morning and ended around 6 in the evening when the suspect, who was holed up in that house, finally surrendered. Police say a woman says she was assaulted and held against her will while her life was threatened before she was able to escape. That house was in the 1400 block of 5th Street South. She eventually called 911 from a neighbor's house and told police that the suspect had a gun. They set up a perimeter and made phone contact with a man who they say denied doing anything wrong and told them he wasn't in the house. The SWAT team later deployed flash bombs as well as a SWAT robot and a drone. Police say the suspect finally came out after they threw tear gas into the house. Blake Fitzgerald was arrested for domestic assault and threats and has a felony warrant out of Wisconsin. A former Minneapolis police officer is back in jail after being convicted of murder in the deadly shooting of an unarmed woman who approached his squad car after she called 911. Mohamed Noor was charged in the July 2017 death of Justine Damon. She had just called 911 to report what she thought was a sexual assault happening in the alley behind her home. Noor was found guilty of third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter, but acquitted of intentional second-degree murder. There's word of another case of extreme animal abuse on the Red Lake Indian Reservation in Minnesota. Yesterday, we told you about a puppy being mutilated, and now a local rescue operation says they're hearing about a dog that was stabbed and then run over. It was discovered on April 20th and involved a dog named Sunshine in the town of Redby. People are telling the founder of Red Lake Rosie's Rescue that after a child was scratched by the pet, one of the men in the house stabbed the dog and another intentionally ran it over. The state of North Dakota is threatening to sue Washington if that state's governor signs legislation requiring oil shipped by rail to have more of its volatile gases removed. Proponents of the bill say it would boost safety. And the push to change comes after a series of train crashes and derailments involving oil cars. One just outside of Castleton in December of 2013 prompted the evacuation of much of the town and caused about $6 million in damage. And we're looking at that crash right now. Some of the rail cars exploded and about 400,000 gallons of crude oil spilled. But now North Dakota officials worry the Washington state bill could hamper the nation's number two oil producer. And they believe it's an unconstitutional violation of the interstate commerce law. There's another document shredding push this week that can take care of your personal papers. DocuShred is hosting one event today at the Alaris Financial on 32nd Avenue South in Fargo and another tomorrow at the Home of Economy in Grand Forks. Both run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. North Dakota Today will be live from both events. April showers bring May flowers. And we're kicking off the month of May by showing ways that we can get our gardens ready. And the Valley Today's Abby Furchner is live from SNS Landscaping this morning with more on how we can get started right now. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, you guys. I'm here with Allison Bircham with SNS Landscaping. And just because it's a gloomy day today doesn't mean you can't get out to that garden and start doing some planting. And we have some flowers that you can plant even now and they'll last you all of spring. Yep, absolutely. So now is a wonderful time for planting trees, shrubs, and perennials. And we've got a few really beautiful spring bloomers right here to tell you guys about. Um, first, we've got this heartleaf burgania. These guys are fantastic, uh, great for the early spring. And as you can see, See, they're already popping with awesome spring <laughs> blooms. So these guys are a wonderful additive to remind us that it's spring. They're some of the first ones that come up. We also have some forsythia on either side of the table here. And these guys are going to be a screaming yellow accent for your yard. They come big and small in different sizes for big yards and also smaller spaces. And they definitely make a really good punch this time of season to remind us that yeah. spring is here. I truly do love the colors. Once we came outside, I was like, oh my goodness it feels like spring finally but we are in that in-between season where there is frost on the ground sometimes in the mornings it gets warmer in the afternoon so how can we protect our plants from frost 
aside from just really knowing when the frost is coming, the best things that you're going to be able to do is water the night before to keep that soil temperature up, mm. as well as cover things with something fibrous like a bed sheet or a frost cloth. And you can definitely come in here to SNS Landscaping and talk to me or anybody else here on the staff about any of these great spring bloomers or how to protect them. I absolutely am just so excited to get outside and start doing some planting myself. But yeah, these are just some easy tips that you can do to get out into that garden today. Happy spring. Happy spring. <laughs> Happy spring. I love that. Thank you, Abby. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, 35% of us say this is the most intimidating exercise to do in public. Well, the answer is yoga. I'd have to agree. I can't bend at all. But anyway, you can take part in our question of the morning on the Valley News Live Facebook page. Go ahead and join the conversation. And today's kind of a gloomy start to the yeah, month. Yeah, it's nice to see those flowers and stuff to kind of pick us up. Know that we've got warmer weather on the way for the growing season. Until then, we're kind of dealing with the gloom and the showers here this morning. You could see some snow out to the west. That'll eventually move into the valley as rain mainly. We'll see chances for rain throughout the day with a high of 49. So not very warm, but tomorrow I think that's when we may see some sun. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the valley today rolls on. Join us right now for more live up-to-the-minute news and weather on the Fargo CW.